Well, I'm Jeffrey Harris. I, uh, I've lived in Homer all my life. Um, I was born in Cortland Hospital, 1930. If that, <laughs> and uh, Curtis Harris is my father. He had a he had a little kind of a mini farm of six acres or so, just north of the uh, Factory Brook Bridge, and that was where I grew up, and probably the best place in the world for kids to play. And we had a whole gang of Homer kids would come up there and, and, and play. And we, of course, it was during World War II. We, I was 11 during Pearl Harbor, when Pearl Harbor happened. So uh, we, we were all war games right, right from the beginning. <laughs> and uh, we had a really good time. Built forts and ran in the river, that, in the Tyoff and Yoga River we lived in, and up on the hillside, <clears throat> which, of course, was not the way it is today, which is all overgrowth and Route 81, so I don't think anybody's allowed up there anymore. Mm -hmm. So, but when I was there, when I was young, it was <clears throat> just becoming overgrown from all the cow pastures that used to be up there, and the, the, the cow paths were still all present on the hillside. There was a high one, a middle one, and a low one right along the river, and you could go all the way up to Turkey Park. On, on the low path. Who had the cows up there before? before <clears throat> Who did? Yeah. Well, it was privately owned farmland. Uh -huh. And then of course the cows left and the trees grew up and Route 81 came along and that just changed everything. <clears throat> um, I remember uh, growing up a little older and working around there, that back in the day, the, the, the tractors, of course, the technology, the tractors and so on were still there, but horses hadn't left yet. And I know when my dad did his haying for, we had we had a, always had a cow, one for milk and one for beef, and occasionally a pig. <clears throat> so he had a, a field that he had to uh, cut for hay for the winter time. And uh, he always had a, some guy with a horse drawn, uh, mowing machine and a horse drawing kick rake and he would uh, harvest our field for us. But shortly after that I would work up up the street for uh, Mr. Bell <clears throat> who had, I think had something to do with the dairy on Bell's Dairy on Albany Street. And uh, Yeah I think it was. And anyway he had a little farm up there and we kids, we were just kids, would cut cut corn, we'd have to, in those days, you'd have a tractor pull a wagon along the, along the cornfield and we would have to lift, pull the stalks out of the ground and lay them in a certain way on the wagon and they were full of mud and I had more mud on me than there was in the dirt, in the earth, I think. And then they'd take it up to where the silage cutter ground it up and put it into the silo, but some guy had to cut off all the root. It was really hard work, I was surprised. <clears throat> And we also did haying with the with the the old uh, uh, automatic feeder, but it was all bulk hay. And <clears throat> when you got a hay uh, a load of hay up to the barn, they put down the hay fork and lifted up a large chunk of it and took it way up and put it in. We had to mow it away. And I can I tell you, it was so dusty. I can imagine how farmers' lung became a real problem. Mm -hmm. In those days, mm -hmm. and uh, so the hay was loose. It wasn't. Yeah, no, it wasn't bales. bailed. It wasn't bailed. Wow. The balers were being were arriving yeah. at the time, but uh, it, it took more than just a little guy mm -hmm. to afford a baler. Mm -hmm. I think probably. And but but I do remember occasionally driving around the countryside. This was the end of the milk can business before the bulk trucks came and mm -hmm. took up milk, and the little stands by the road were still there. Uh, I worked on the I worked on the house just before they built 100 and, well, 101 North Main as the uh, uh, Joe what's his name honey Armedio Arme, Armedio mm -hmm. his home I was 
I don't know, 15 or 16 then, and, uh, and Marathon Line Company hired me to mow the lawn, which was a hay field. Mm -hmm. They gave me a little power mower, and then uh, Monday I started here, and Friday I was there, and Monday I started here to get those, my summer job, pretty much. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah, well it was for, for a kid my age, yeah, yeah, yeah. I you, loved it. You mentioned uh, Bell's Dairy. Uh, what was that? Well, uh, Bell's Dairy was, was, uh, um, right next to the bridge at Albany Street, where that I don't know what the building is being used for now, but I have I have an old picture I found in my dad's collection of stuff that was about a oh, two by three or something. When they took the old bridge out and put in the present bridge, which is 1941, but the bridge is missing, and you can see a a, a wooden temporary bridge off to the left. And in the background is a dairy truck. Now I know it's Bell's Dairy and Connie Steger, if you know her, yeah. she was a Bell. Mm -hmm. And she is familiar with that uh, dairy operation, I believe, down there. She's given us bottles, I think, from it. So they processed milk? Yeah. Do they yeah. make cheese there too, or just milk? I don't milk? think so, but I don't really know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It seems like every town had a dairy or cheese factory or something. Oh, that's right. Where, where they processed the milk that was if, if you If you live long enough around here and look around, and well, another thing I did just for fun, <clears throat> Nadine, <clears throat> our son and I, <clears throat> excuse me, would drive around last year in the summertime when the weather was decent, take pictures of the old barns. I got maybe 200 and some mm -hmm. pictures of old barns around Cortland County. But it's surprising is how close together they were. Mm -hmm. They're relatively small, but nowadays they're not in business anymore because they can't afford to be. And so you know, you go by these big 2,000 cow factories, yeah, milk factories. That's amazing. And it's just in those back in the old days with the milk cans, you service just a small area. Right. And right. Then of course, uh, as time went by, well, the area just got bigger, and so the farms had to get bigger, and the production uh -huh. got more technical. You're right. It's a, a yeah. factory. My my grandfather's. Dairy was 120 acres. Yeah, yeah. You know, I forget, maybe at 30 cows or something yeah. like that. Yeah, you can't. And, economies and, of scale now. Are yeah, so huge. and the, and the, and the cows are very seldom out very far from the barn when you do let them out. They're not out there. You know, they they, they cut hay, I suppose, but mm -hmm. but uh, you don't have to have all that acreage for mm -hmm. for cows to mm -hmm. graze. Uh, you know, one of the questions that we are asking people is. What 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 are some of the biggest changes you've seen in a, in, in the last sixty years or so? And that that's probably one of them. The 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 farming, even though it's still a large industry here, the way it's done is so different than it used to be. Oh yeah. Because you had all these supporting businesses that supported all these individual farmers, and now yeah. it's this yeah. great big humongous yeah, uh, they are. industry. They are. You know? The other the other thing that uh, is so much different is that. Uh, the expansion, particularly in, in Cortland and down the west side, that was all farmland when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And then Mer and Smith Corona built their plant, and we had a, a lot of uh, manufacturing around here. And of course, it has mm -hmm. gone for one reason or another mm -hmm. <clears throat> someplace. So, and, and things are changing. Um, what you get to be my age, you don't change for the better because the traffic is horrendous now. It's just awful. There are marketing people that know what they're doing, you know, and they're going down where burned areas and down through there. Who would ever have thought years ago that it would expand it on that? You know, way? Um, this is a little off the topic, but uh, that stretch. Uh, my grandparents, I, I was raised in Massachusetts, but I'd come out and spend summers on my grandparents' farm on Page Green Road. And I loved that stretch, that that mm -hmm. was some of the best farmland in the whole county, and it was easy to farm, it was flat yep, and nice. Right. And when they built Smith Corona, um, I found it well, last year, a letter to the editor I wrote. <laughs> saying, oh, really? How dare you build a factory <laughs> on, on that beautiful farmland right, you know, pretty right. soon? And I said something like, you know, 30 years from now, we'll, we'll look around and say, what have we done? You know, a little yeah. dramatic, because I was right. a kid writing it. Right. And, but, I, but what we've done is a gigantic parking lot down there now. Yeah. Well, Huge. They're, yeah. they're proud of it. They think it's a great stuff yeah. that they're well, doing all this. You, 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 have to, you have to talk about a way for people to make a living. I mean, things change. You know, the buggy whips aren't being made anymore. 
and change. we have to change. Mm -hmm. And we do what we can, of course. Mm -hmm. so after high school, I worked at Wholesale Electric. Well, maybe my first real, my first job at 14 was at uh, the Kaleo Chicken Farm, working up mm -hmm. there, um, cleaning up in spring. Mm -hmm. And uh, where, that, where was that located? Right where Suits live, the Suits home. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was that was the Kaleo Chicken Farm, mm -hmm. and. That was hard work. <laughs> At 14, it was really lost. Yeah. Did and, you pluck the chickens or did were you just No, we just cleaned. Cleaning? We had to clean three floors of. Mm -hmm. Oh, gee. Talk well, about dust. Yeah, yeah. And ammonia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a surprise. Mm -hmm. But, uh, well, not only a surprise, but it was, it was kind of hard work. Mm -hmm. But it was a job. You do, you know, if you're going to get paid, you, you do the job. Do you remember what you earned for doing that? How much they what paid? What I learned from? How much they Well, how much did, did they pay you for? Well, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know what it was back then. They might have paid me a quarter or 50 cents or something. I don't know, you know. Uh, I didn't care, really, because I'd never had any spending money of my own, mm -hmm. which makes a difference. When you uh, would go downtown, maybe to get a ice cream or something, how, how would you get money for that? Was that money that you earned for doing chores, or...? Well, pretty, pretty much. Uh, my parents had eight kids, and they were all depression kids, and they didn't have money to hand every week to a kid for, for that. Mm -hmm. So mainly what little money I had came from my efforts. At, and I, she, probably my mother gave me, or dad gave me something, because we, uh, we did have chores to do. Mm -hmm. We had to empty the ashes, you know, on Saturday morning, and I had to be on the end of a crosscut saw because it was burning wood. And, uh, in a furnace and, and coal, of course, and mow the lawn and that kind of thing. I did not have to ever learn how to milk a cow. For I'm very grateful for that. <clears throat> he did that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, it was it was pretty good. If we were poor, we never knew it. You know, it was just, the depression. You see the lines, the pictures of lines of people in the cities. I mean, they must have really suffered, mm -hmm. but we didn't. We had we had food and clothing and warmth and shelter, and mm -hmm. there were, you know we didn't have any money, but mm -hmm. but we had a good life. You know, as you talk, it occurs to me that another difference between our history and now is now we have more of a sense of who has something and who doesn't, and striving for. Well, that fellow has a BMW, and I only have a Volkswagen, yeah, or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, it doesn't seem to me like that was as much as as prevalent in the past. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. No. And no. I, don't, I don't know why. Whether but, well, there weren't the super there weren't the super millionaires that there are now. Mm -hmm. You know that people can vent their spleen at. Mm -hmm. uh, I I never I never cared who had what. You know, it's up to everybody to do what they can. Mm -hmm. uh, but. John Briggs and Charlie Briggs and other people all drove Cadillacs. So they earned them. <laughs> you know, I never had a problem about them, about that sort of thing, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't have a problem with Bill Gates or many of these other people that, that earn a great deal of money, mm -hmm. because they're not they're not bad capitalists. They really aren't. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that they give more of their money away than people think they do. You know, I I just think they're probably decent mm -hmm. people. Uh, I know uh, during this rancorous election we had that uh, there was a lot of, well, I, I had a discussion with one of my sisters who, she's in the opposite end, of, opposite end of the political spectrum that I am, and we had a lot of discussion about who should be doing what to whom and when and so on, you know, and, and uh, she's more of a globalist and I'm more of a nationalist, you know. As far as that goes, but, but we still love each other. I was going to say you could discuss it. And, yes, and we some could. Some people couldn't could. discuss yeah. it rationally yeah. without yeah. coming yeah. to blows. You know? yeah. Well, I have a nephew, Dave Fiskin, and I can talk. We're opposites too, but mm -hmm. we don't. We, we're not rancorous about it. You know, mm -hmm. good time. Um, it's hard not to be aware of the political atmosphere nowadays. It's pretty and, toxic. Yeah, yeah, and and the communications are too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know that the, the uh, this isn't concerning just Cortland, but the 24-hour news cycle made 
uh, news be more entertainment than news. So, you know, you've really got yeah. this yeah. effort to fill this 24-7 cycle and yeah. it's just, it, it's... Overwhelming. Uh, it, it, yeah, and yeah. it kind of has sensationalized everything. You know? Yes, in order to get your viewers and you, you, you have to cut out something that's going to Right. Bring your attention yeah, to it. We're not big ones for nuance anymore either. No, no. Well, we, we don't know what that is much anymore, that's for sure. We, we talked about, uh, before the camera went on, about uh, history, uh, learning history, a sense of history, and, and you're quite active now in the historical society. Yeah, this is my 20th year, but I'm, I, I'm not by any means can be called a historian because I don't do research. What I like to do is pictures, and in my Margaret, my sister Margaret is the family genealogist, mm -hmm. but I do pictures for genealogy. My own, I have alb three ring binders full of stuff, you know, of of family pictures. Mm -hmm. And what made you be interested in that? How did you get interested? I don't know. I've taken pictures ever since high school. Uh -huh. Some people take pictures, and and the difference between a photographer and a picture taker is. The professionalism. I'm a picture taker. I'm not a photographer. <laughs> My pictures would be better if I were, uh, but I've taken pictures ever since high school, and I think I got it from my dad, who took pictures when he could with whatever he had to use on hand. Yeah, yeah. Did you develop your own pictures? Or no, no, no. So no, where did no. where did you go to get them developed? You you sent them away. To, oh, well, I give them to the drugstore in Cortland, you know. Okay. And the drugstores took care of that yeah. sort of thing. That's another thing that's gone. Yes. Well, you can have you can have you can have pictures printed yet at uh, what's the one down the street here? Uh, the chain. Yeah, that the yeah. Staples. Huh? Staples. Walgreens and Walgreens. CBS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they print them. Yeah, yeah. As far as like the corner drugstore. Yeah. Oh no. Somebody no, developing no, that no. film. No, this is going to take two weeks to get your pictures back. Mm -hmm, yeah, because mm -hmm. they have to send them somewhere, right, and it's just right. it, it's a lost process, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well, I, uh, of course, Pearl Harbor, World War II was a big event in everybody's lives. We used to go down to the airport and watch the C-46s come in and, and a whole line and touch and go and take off again. Practicing. Practice, just a touch and go landing on a short, on a short grass field. One of them crashed, I think, once. Um, other than that, every time an aircraft, a military aircraft came overhead. We ran outdoors to see it if we could. By then it was almost gone. I remember my sister Edith was on the phone with someone, in, a friend of hers in Preble, and a fighter aircraft came by very low. <laughs> she said, oh, there's an air aircraft coming by. And, the, and her person on the other line said, yeah, he's right here now. <laughs> where were they flying? Yeah. Do you know where they were flying out of? No, no, it, probably. Possibly Syracuse, yeah. but I don't. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, my brother. My brother enlisted in the RCAF just before, <laughs> in 1940, because he wanted to be a pilot. And in those days, to be a pilot in the U.S. Air Force, you had to have four degree, four college, uh, four year college degree. So he got his training up there, and then when after Pearl Harbor, they transferred the Americans back, back down here. Uh, he was my hero. He, he was a B-26 pilot out of England mm -hmm. and um, had a couple of neat stories, but he was shot down, taken prisoner. All his crew survived. Mm -hmm. um, actually, the B-26, for anybody who is interested, had the highest crew survival rate of any bomber mm -hmm. in the World War II. I wonder why that was. They were fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they were fast. Mm -hmm. And he had, he had some interesting stories about it. Where, where was he taken prisoner? Where did he? Oh, where was the Moselle, he in the Moselle area in Germany, oh. he was shot down. Mm -hmm. the, the the story he gave me was that uh, of the I, I've got the all the paperwork on the flight and the location and all this sort of thing. The flight that he was heading, but anyway, he said the uh, the lead navigator made an error. They went mm -hmm. they went up this particular area to avoid the anti aircraft batteries, and but they. they the navigator had, had made an error and had to reacquire the target. He said he turned around to come back down and do a reacquirement. He came down right in the aircraft area, and uh, he said he said uh, he got a report. Well, a, a shell went through the wing next to an engine, but it didn't explode. 
and then the engine fell off. And he says that in B-26 you have 90 seconds to evacuate the aircraft. And he said that the radio man <coughs> was out the window still buckling on his chute. Oh my <laughs> and my brother said, everybody, he told everybody to get out. They got out. <clears throat> he said to his co-pilot, it's your turn. The co-pilot got, stood up from his seat, reached down, picked up a hat, and put it on his head, threw it down, reached down and picked up another one and went out the nose wheel. And my brother said, it's my turn to go. I went down to get my hat and I said, hell, he threw my hat out. <laughs> He threw my head out. That's what he was thinking about. It, it's amazing what, it, people, what runs through people's minds. It's yeah, yeah. Amazing. It's just incredible. Yeah. Um, but he had, had a couple of good stories that, that I don't, if it's supposed to be about him, I'd be, I'd be happy to talk about uh -huh. him. But uh, some other time, maybe. But after the war, um, I uh, joined the Navy. I was in the Navy for four years. Uh, married Nadine in 1953. That was a momentous event, of course, in my life. We had five kids that are scattered around. Are, they, are any of them in the area here? Oh yeah, two of them. Uh, well, one is in Truxton, and Stacy and Miguel are over on James Street, and, and Dale is here. Um, so, yeah, so three out of five or something? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, uh, that's interesting because a lot of people, pe that, their uh, children have scattered. Totally, really time. gone, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have one in Florida, and. and uh, and uh, one in Texas. Hmm. So, yeah, we, we've been blessed with having our kids pretty close by most of the time. Mm -hmm. This was a good area to raise children? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Why, why yeah. so? Why, why well, it? because it doesn't, I, if, you, if you can kind of discount all the stories we're hearing about the meth labs and, and this kind of thing which has pervaded every community, other than that, it's it's a little quieter, and uh, you you can still walk downtown and talk to people and not have to go far to to buy something and one thing and another. I of course, as far as that goes, I remember it <laughs> when I was growing up during the war. Main Street and Homer had two drug stores and three grocery stores within walking distance, just on that short length of Main Street. Yeah. It seems unreal now. It, it does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Although there is some merchandising going on now in Homer. You've got some shops there. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That, that are kind of attracting people that go from yeah. one to the other. Yeah. So that's well, nice to see. It's uh, the other thing is the, is the architectural changes, but I, I suppose they're for the better. But uh, I remember Anna Hilton was our, was our architectural conscience around here. You know, and she made no bones about it. If you were doing something to your house. She couldn't do anything about it, but she didn't have any qualms about telling you about mm -hmm. what you were doing. Mm -hmm. um, but Homer developed, and then Homer, Homer was, the, was the hub here, but then Cartland became the hub because of the railroads, and Homer just got left in space, time, a, a time machine, so to speak. And our architecture didn't change, but what bothers me is that we're losing these buildings. We just lost one last year, you know. And what, what, what was that? The that was the. Uh, uh, oh, the one that burned. Yeah, the one that burned on Pine Street. Oh, on Pine yeah. Street. Okay. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember the names because I can't remember anything right. anymore. But uh, it was we've a lost, house. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was no. It was no. a. It had apartments upstairs. A lawyer's downstairs in okay. a, a beauty salon and. Well, I guess I don't know. And apartments it. upstairs. Uh -huh. It wasn't. Architecturally, it wasn't a mm -hmm. piece of work. It was historically mm -hmm. a, a building that, that was it was in action in activity for the. That was the one on Main Street. That yeah, lawyers yeah, right on the corner okay. of Main and right. Main and Pine right. Street. I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. But at one time, I guess they had a an auditorium up there where they held lectures and one thing and another. Mm -hmm. Had a Civil War activity history or something. You know, mm -hmm. it's just a shame. Mm -hmm. And of course. Uh, friend, it's not friends anymore. Who is it? Dashers. Yes, Dasher Cox. Come and go, yes, I remember Dasher Coxes from years ago, mm -hmm. uh, when Syracuse and Cornell were athletic contenders, and Dashers was a place where they everybody going in either direction met to have dinner. I didn't know that. And, and Homer 
it was a parking lot for, you know, for a while, yeah. And, uh, but it, it has changed, and I think probably it, it's better mm -hmm. because it was, you, you can't keep those buildings looking in that condition forever. You'll, you'll just end up getting burned up or torn down. Mm -hmm. So well, I, no, I bet when you look at your older pictures that you have, you know, some places when you look at a picture from 1930s or 40s and a picture now, you wouldn't recognize it. But when you look at an older picture, one of your older pictures of Homer downtown from the past and now, yeah. the changes are not so dramatic that you don't know that this is Homer. There's more of the same than well, different, isn't it? Essentially, there? yeah, that, that's, that, that's true to a point. I mean, I can remember where the Homer post office is when it wasn't there, when there were other buildings there. Mm -hmm. And that was a big change mm -hmm. there, yeah. What was there before? Well, there was a, there was a home and, a, and, and businesses, and I can't, I don't remember what they were because I was seven or eight. Mm -hmm. um, but I know there was a beauty parlor there, and I, I can't remember all the businesses mm -hmm. that, that were there. But, so they tore those down and put the post yeah, up? Yeah, they tore those down, but my, 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 my sister Margaret tells me that the building on the end was a home that was moved down to South Main Street and it's directly across the street from the Albany Street entrance. And I, I question that, but I'm not knowledgeable enough to mm -hmm. a, make an argument about it. Is she an older sister? Yeah, she's, she's, <laughs> yeah, she's 96. She just yeah. had her 96th birthday. Thank goodness. Yeah. Wow. And she's sharp as a tack. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think I, I spoke to her yesterday, actually. Did you? Yeah, it was oh. kind of a coincidence in a way that yeah. it got scheduled like that. But yeah, she's really interesting and she is sharp. I yeah. enjoy talking yeah. to her. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You come from a neat family. I, 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 I you know, just having hearing Margaret talk about your mother, especially, she sounds mm -hmm. like a really yeah. neat yeah. lady. Yeah. yeah. Well, my my dad was a, a nice guy too. I mean, he he wouldn't, wasn't afraid to laugh at himself if something stupid happened, mm -hmm. or he did something stupid. Mm -hmm. But he, he, he took us up on the hill when we were boys, and he'd gotten permission from the <clears throat> power company to take any of the poles and cross arms they wanted because he, uh, they were putting up new ones. So Roger and I went up with him and he, I think we were I don't know, 11 or 12, 13, something like that. And we hauled these cross arms and he still had the glass insulators screwed to them, you know, and we had to unscrew them and pitch them across the river next to Camp Debris. <laughs> but, and I was landed in the river and his got all the way across. You're showing them how to lob them in World War One. <laughs> And Gertie style, <laughs> but ours landed in the river. I don't know how many we that's recovered, funny. if any. Oh but, oh, and we pulled those poles <laughs> over, and he he had he, he split some for a split rail fence, and he gave us three of them to make a fort with. So we made a three-legged fort up on a bluff, and put a platform up on top of it. We had to have one of the one of the neighbor guys who was an adult and stronger. Mm -hmm. We dug the holes and he lifted the poles and dropped them in. And now, to this day, I cannot remember how we got up there on that platform. That's cool. That must have been really neat. Yeah, though. this is all this is all part of our childhood. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Just fun. How yeah. neat. And after we built the fort, I think probably we lost interest in it. Right. It was the process of, yeah. of building yeah. it that was so much fun. But it was all part of that, and his camp debris. He had a camp down by the on on the edge of the by Tyoff Yoga down there. Got pictures of all that, but that's a real name, Camp Debris. Well, yeah, uh, uh, my dad uh, was a guy who liked to build things, and nothing ever went to waste. He was one of the original recyclers. <laughs> <laughs> His legion buddies. He built this camp in the late twenties, I think it was, a one-room affair, and. Uh, He'd have his legion meetings down there. They, they, this is between between the wars. He'd have the legion meetings down there. Anyway, uh, he'd have a, a pile of fence posts and a pile of stones and a pile of wire. <laughs> I think it was uh, Bert Goodwin said to him, "Kurt, you know, you we ought to call this place." He looked around. And he said, "Kurt, you ought to call this place Camp Debris." <laughs> My dad loved it. It's, it's been there, been there ever since. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's neat. If you had to think about some of your favorite locations in the county, it sounds like from the way you talk that looking back... Some That's of, one of them, yeah, certainly. Of, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, that's probably yeah. the prime one. Yeah. But another one would be uh, when we took the kids up to uh, Homer Gulf. That was, this was before 
before they made Little York a park, a real park. And Homer Golf, the county had put in picnic tables and barbecue stands. Where the park is now? No, no. up on Route 90 in Homer Golf. I, see, I'm not familiar with Homer Golf. Well, if you, well, do you know where Atwater Cemetery is up mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. Okay, if you turn up oh, okay. 41A, mm -hmm. and along, yes. alongside okay. there are okay. turnoff places, but I the county, you. county put in picnic really? table. We took, and there's a little stream there, yes. and uh, kids had a wonderful time. There. Must have been really small. Well, there were two or three of them, I guess, weren't yeah. there, honey? Two or three locations. I there, think more than that, five well, or six, I think. But I don't know. But they were big enough to drive in and park your car mm -hmm. and be off the road and away from the road, you know. Go waiting in the stream? Yeah. yeah. Was, well, the stream was maybe three inches deep, I mean, yeah. in the summertime. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, that is a pretty, it, pretty area. Yeah, and yeah. the kids love it. They still talk about it, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm not taking anything away from New York Park because they've done a marvelous, marvelous job yeah, yeah, up there. It's, a, it's, it's beautiful that that's been preserved. Yeah, that yeah, should, yeah. The old building included. Um, yes, absolutely. A lot of those old wooden structures like that. Just, yeah, you know, are absolutely. Yeah. And it's still being used. That's the other yeah. thing that's nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. if, you, if you think about um, what the future might hold, do you have any thoughts on what the future might hold? If, if we, you and I were sitting here... 60 years from now, do you have any thoughts on Well, I'm, I would think, off the top of my head, that Homer wouldn't be much bigger. And, and, and within the confines of the village, and not much room to, to uh, expand. Now, right, you're looking right out the window there, there's room to expand, and to the south of us, there's another field. We're really quite isolated here on two sides, mm -hmm. very quiet and nice, but anyway, this house was built with a driveway over here behind you because they knew there was talk about the village bringing a street up here and developing this land. So this house was built with a driveway here. I wondered about that. The yeah. first time I came here, I thought it, this it, is kind of odd. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's, yeah. A, it's a two-car garage. You uh -huh. come in this way and in that way, and the two cars come in the garage. A little offset. But that didn't come to And the that place. never happened. So, so who owns this land here? Um, one of the people over on South Main Street owns that lot. Okay. And someone over on Cortland Street owns the one to the south of us. I don't know who they are, but they're both out there mowing and we wave at each other and they don't mind if we walk on there and use it or something and they, you know. It is like a little park here. Yeah, kind yeah. of, yeah. But we've seen all kinds of wildlife uh -huh. here. Yeah. Yeah, deer and turkey and, and pheasant and Pheasant. Yeah, we saw fox. pheasant. We saw pheasant. Oh, fox. Oh, it was a beautiful. Fox. I got a picture of him. A beautiful fox last year. Whoa. Nice and healthy. And, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So stuff turns up. So, so uh, you, you don't think the, that the town will change much? Where, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think so. Where no. do you think the people that would live here 60 years from now? Where would they? be working? Where would they, what would they be doing? With well, themselves? that's a good question, but 60 years from now, you got to ask yourself where the digital technology is going. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you, you pretty much have to follow the follow the technology. I mean, probably it would be right in here because it's, I, I, I say it was, well, it's not a good example, and I say it with a certain amount of cynicism, you don't want manufacturing in Cortland anymore or we'd have more of it because manufacturing is dirty. But you can walk into the suitcase and your whole business is in that suitcase nowadays. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's going to be more suitcase businesses mm -hmm. around here. More people work from home than I ever would have dreamed mm -hmm. years ago. It's true. That's a good answer. Yeah. 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 So I, 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 I don't think I can imagine yeah. what it would be like 60 yeah. years from yeah. now. Yeah, the pace of change is so rapid, yeah. too. It's, yeah. it's hard to conceive the, how the, quickly. The main thing that people have done in the past and probably will continue to do in the future is maintain these homes. And that would be very important yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hope so, because it, it's a beautiful town. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It sounds like you've had a wonderful life here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no question. I've, I've been here all but six years of my life. Well, now, the six years were when you were in the Navy? I was in the Navy, and uh, when I got out, we were married, and I went to uh, uh, Cortland. I <clears throat> looked around for a job, didn't find anything I liked. Decided I wanted to be in business for myself somehow. Didn't care what that might be, but had no business education in high school. I, I took 
science and math, which I wasn't good at. <laughs> so I went to business school and I, uh, during the days, and I worked at the Thompson Boat on the night shift mm -hmm. for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Then we moved to Homer and uh, I went to work for the Homer Laundry for a couple of years and my brother and his brother, my brother and his friend Ozzie Austin Lanning, Ted and Austin Lanning were building houses and uh, Ted was a salesman also for Marathon Line Company, Fish Line Company. And he managed to get an order for uh, store displays for Fish Line. And I went to work there as part time to do the work. And then they decided it'd be nice to go into a line of gun racks because he was already selling Fish Line to sporting goods dealers. He could sell gun racks to the, well, he wasn't selling to dealers, he was selling to jobbers. And uh, so we developed a little line of gun racks. Now this is all at 103 Clinton in the barn in Homer. Mm. And uh, uh, we started making them. We made big displays for archery and fishing tackle and one thing and another. And the Austin Landing was busy building houses so he wanted to continue that. So he sold his stock to Ted. and. Uh, Dad and I went on and it was, we incorporated, and now I was in a business that was startup and you know, not making any money. Yeah. <laughs> and one day, uh, one day a fellow showed up at the doorstep and introduced himself as Ernest Cady. He had a wood turning shop over in East Homer, uh, located behind the church in the Grange Hall there. And it's, it's, it's been called the chair factory, and when he had it, it's called the handle factory by the locals, I guess it was. And anyway, he showed up at our door one day and, and said, well, he wasn't ready to sell, but he wanted to sell his business over some period of time, but he didn't want to sell it to somebody who was not in the woodworking business. A very, very smart guy in that respect because everything isn't for everybody. So we talked it over and we went over and went over and inspected the place and, and took a look at it and there was all kinds of room for us plus his business. He wasn't using mm. half, I don't think of it. And it was the old uh, Bosworth Line Company building and behind it was an old creamery right next to the Lehigh Valley Railroad. I have pictures of all that. Mm. And so we rented for a couple of years to see and and kind of monitored what he was doing, and he would give us he would give us a job now and then to help pay the rent, and also learn to ease into that sort of thing. And <clears throat> I think in 1960 we we bought him. We made a deal to buy it. And uh, in 1964, Ted wanted to do other things, so he left, and I was left with the business and continued it. And that's what I've done for 33 years. And what what were you sell, selling out of that? Well, in wood turnings, almost anything, pretty mundane stuff. But I mean, uh, mop ringer rollers, and uh, <coughs> little tool handles, fishing rod, wooden fishing rod handles were big then. This is not long after the war. This was before they all they discovered that it was good to to make them with foam mm -hmm. handles, which they all are now. Mm -hmm. I don't think you'd ever find a wooden handle one anymore. But that was big. We were big in that then. And of course, souvenir baseball bats. It's so you just... get orders, and you yeah we custom to the yeah we deal with jobbers. We didn't have anything proprietary at all. No. We when don't... you say jobber, what's a jobber? Well, jobber is the guy who goes out and finds the places to sell the stuff to. He's the middleman. He's the middleman. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we would have had to have a sales force to go out and try and find all these people, or somebody on a com well didn't have computers then. You know, <clears throat> do it by telephone or direct mail or something, which isn't mm -hmm. good. So the jobber saves you a lot. He he will send you an order for ten thousand of something. You know, because he's got the customer. So you ran that business for for many years. Yeah, thirty well, uh, thirty three years. Yeah, wow. thirty three years. Was... And what made you stop? Old age, <laughs> retirement. Because <laughs> you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, Nadine retired. And and what did what did your wife do? She worked at Cortland Water Board okay. for 27 years. How many? 33 years. 
Thirty. Thirty years. And and where where are you from? Did, did you, I was born in Cortland. You're from Cortland. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be on camera, but no, I. <laughs> you don't want to be on camera. I don't know why not. You come over here and sit in this chair. So where did you meet the, the two of you? Uh, blind date? I guess it was a blind, a blind date. date. Yeah, a blind date. Oh, yeah. well, that's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, we mm -hmm. seemed to hit it off. You must thank the people that set it up, huh? Yeah, well, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I have no reason not to. <laughs> yeah. I, I uh, was reading my mother's diary she, uh, from 1945, and I was she was in high school in Portland. And I was struck by how often she went to the movies, that she was always going downtown from Page Green Road to go to the movies mm -hmm. or the opera house. Or, mm -hmm. So, so it, d d now Homer did, had a movie theater in yeah, the town right. hall. Yes. So is that where you would go to, to yes. go to the movies? Yeah. Probably yeah. going into Cortland was a bigger deal. Yeah, I love the state theater. Well, I love the lobby of the state theater. Yeah. Well, do, you, do you remember what it was like at all? Well, it had all these halberds and, and uh, uh, weapons and shields and oh. stuff from back in, I don't know, 1066 or 1200 or something. You know, imitation. Oh. It was Hollywood. Yeah. It was Hollywood oh, stuff and dark it. red walls and it was really neat, a really wonderful. Well, I imagine, especially yeah. if you were interested in playing war games. That <laughs> yeah, well, really yeah. fun. Well, it was back in the days of the Knights of Gold, you know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the other thing was that it, it was the one venue that would hold a large crowd for professional mm -hmm. and big bands used to come there mm -hmm. during the war. Well big bands also came to the Skateland if you remember the Skateland well that's right across the street from the Living History Center. That's the Quonset Hut. The Quonset Hut. Hut. Mm -hmm. and it's still got part well, it did it and last thing I knew it still had portions of the original mm -hmm. floor mm -hmm. in there and that was a popular place. Big bands came there too mm -hmm. during the war. Mm -hmm. Where you could you could dance. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's neat. I, I told your sister it was it's kind of a fantasy of mine as people talk that I wish sometimes I could go back for a day or two just yeah. to see what it was yeah. like because it sounds so fascinating yeah. to me. Yeah. It sounds so yeah. so neat. Um, well, it was a little it was a different time because uh, there weren't all that many cars. You know, and people walked, and people were out on the street, and people were out on their porches at summer night mm -hmm. when you walk by and you visit, and and uh, it isn't that anymore. No, you know, you're all inside the TV. Inside themselves with the TV mm -hmm. and, and the computer. The computer. Yeah, yeah. 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 So there's there, there's no personal counteraction here mm -hmm. much anymore, mm -hmm. except at meetings, <laughs> which tend to get rancor. <laughs> As you yeah, said, I know. It's not well, pleasant. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You never served in um, the local government here. You never. No, no. The closest I came was when Harry Khalil wanted to have a beautification committee or something, and he wanted this committee to go around town and, point, and bring information to him about what really needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And when we did, he listened for two, I don't know, a year or two, and then he disbanded us because he knew he wasn't going to be able to afford what we were what we were pushing on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You hear what you're to be doing? <laughs> why, don't, why don't you pave? Why don't you? Why don't you curb Fulton Ave? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you couldn't. You couldn't do it. You know. After I retired, I uh, was in, of course, working with the society. But in between that, I take a busman's holiday and build stuff. I built little. St Stables for my grand granddaughters. Uh, I built a couple of doll houses, and one thing and another. I built Nadine a doll house. It was a copy of our old one. You probably seen it. It's a copy of our old one over on Cuba Street. It's a Queen Anne, fourteen room Queen Anne. I built that to scale, so of course it's pretty huge. Mm -hmm. So I make I make miniature furniture to that scale, mm -hmm. so it'll fit in the doll house. I yeah. see some of it behind you there. Yes. Yeah. And, but I make it for my grandkids. I have nine of them, so I have to make nine copies at least of everything. <laughs> Actually, I make ten at least because one of them goes in the dollhouse. Uh, well, that's neat. That's pretty fine work. Well, I don't know. It's, it's the best I can do mm -hmm. because uh, it's, it's I'm only working with an eight-inch table saw. I don't have any miniature equipment, mm -hmm. so I, I don't want to get any smaller 
take a chance on losing fingers. Yeah. That's you, all. You don't want to do that. But it's very interesting to me because I have to figure out ways to do things that I never knew before. Make special jigs and fixtures, one thing or another. I had to learn how to steam, steam wood, and you know, it's really, really a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. But and the hours just fly by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a mechanical, a little bit of design, yeah, a little bit of tinkering. Kind of, yeah. But I'm not. I'm probably not good on original design uh, because I've never been grounded in, I guess, in scale and perception of mention one thing or another so I tend to copy stuff mm -hmm. that I've seen mm -hmm. so but, but figuring out looking at a picture and figure out how you're gonna make it yeah it, that, that's a yeah. challenge I, I started out one of them one of the ones I've made isn't there come to think of it and that's that chest that we had at home with a, a six drawer chest oh I'm surprised I don't have it there um, and so I looked at the real six drawer chest and built a little one just like it and I said well uh, this is this is not that bad, <laughs> you know. <laughs> rather, cool. rather than just trying to do it and figure out, you know. So mm -hmm. I copied it, mm -hmm. and uh, the other stuff that that put me on the path of building this other stuff in mm -hmm. the same manner. Mm -hmm. Although I didn't have to have the original with me, but this one here is a copy of the one that's in the historical society. Oh. That's De Los Bader's uh, desk from the Hotel Cortland. Oh my goodness! Of years ago. Huh. There's, there's a minor difference, but but as far as overall goes, it's pretty close, pretty close to the original thing. It has a has the flip down. Oh, that's cool. Top, now, whose see. desk is that? De Los De Los Bader or Bader? What is his What is his name? I don't know if I have it written in here or not. No, I don't. Well, I made it back in 02, mm -hmm. but uh, Delos Bader, maybe that's his name. He, he used to own the hotel, the old Hotel Cartland. He, he built it, actually, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how did you know that his desk looked like that? We have one, that, we have it, we have it in the society, in the museum. Oh, that's right, you, you said that. It's in the museum, yep. yeah. Yep. So I did take dimensions okay. and pictures yeah. and one thing and another. Cool. And build it as close as I could. Mm -hmm to it. Pretty neat. So, and my late, my latest one was, a, 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 we were up at uh, Mystic, Connecticut last year, went through the medical museum, mm -hmm. and there was a monster of a doctor's office and pharmacy or something with these curved doors that open, open and close. And so, I just took a partial picture of it. This is essentially what it is. Wow. That's a copy of the 1885 History of Cortland County, by the way. Oh my goodness. Then this <laughs> folds up, closes. Oh, that's cool. Very, very neat. That was, uh, that, that was my most involved piece. It took, those things took over a year to make. It looks it, yeah. Yeah. But it's great, great fun. Mm -hmm. You keep pretty busy then. You're pretty active. Oh yeah, I yeah, I do, and I and I write stuff for the family stuff. I've got binders of stuff. Um, I did uh, well. I did my Navy career, which is <laughs> not very not very interesting, and yet it is because it describes the food and the life and the all the stuff of back in the days when I was in the Navy. I mean, we weren't in any combat or anything. We, as I like to joke, we. We, uh, we, we saved the uh, French Riviera from being invaded by the North Koreans. <laughs> Not a single North Korean came near <laughs> the French Riviera. That's because we were there. <laughs> oh my gosh, well, we that's a lofty thing to We did our job. <laughs> but we had those great, great times over there. Years, years later, my Navy buddy, Bill Reinhold, and his wife, and Nadine and I went back to Via Franche, where, where the ship anchored in this gorgeous little bay. And Via Franche is now not a sailor's town, it's an art colony. Mm. And it is just beautiful, mm. just beautiful. 
pretty neat that you had the opportunity to go back and see Yes, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we traveled too. When, when, when we both retired, mm -hmm. we jumped in the car and went, we've been to West Coast three times, we a different way each time. So mm -hmm. we've seen some of the country. Nice. Yeah, yeah we, we've had fun. Mm -hmm. No regrets there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the only question I didn't ask, you probably covered it just in your conversation, but um, what, what do you most appreciate or enjoy about Cortland County? Well, for one thing, the scenery. Mm. When I was, when we were, when we were driving around taking pictures of barns, there were places I'd never been. I was just amazed mm -hmm. how lovely this, this yeah. county is. Mm -hmm. And I, I, and I, I don't know, it, it's like two or three years ago, we decided in the fall that we'd go up into the Adirondacks and check the leaves. Mm -hmm. We were very disappointed. We came back into Cortland County outside of Cooperstown, yeah. over in that in the yeah. southern part. Yeah. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. it's just it's just amazing. I don't know why we even left home. Yeah. You know. Good, good answer. And this and this last summer I got a well, to me it's a prize winning photo mm -hmm. of of uh, the fall colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, but I, I that's, that's what I like about it. It's rural. Mm -hmm. It's both rural and, and a little bit citified, mm -hmm. but not too much, yeah. you know. Good, good mix. Yeah, it is a good mix. Yeah. A good yeah. mix and a good location. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I enjoyed talking to you. Thank you. I enjoy talking yeah. to you. Maybe I can come back sometime. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk about your Navy career more. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to turn the well, camera. Well, Bud Jeremy, Bud Jeremy said, <laughs> "Well, I'd like to hear about your working career." <laughs> so I started writing that up. Mm -hmm. But that could get to be boring, you see, because there's a lot of. Well, no, maybe it is. I don't know if it is or not. Well, I think it, 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 people are interested in it. To you, it might be boring because you lived it, perhaps. Yeah, and, yeah. But to someone like myself, it's so different. Like just hearing you talk about jobbers and how you right. got the orders. I mean, that's so different from how it is now that it's very yeah. interesting to yeah. people to yeah. read it. Even yeah. the minutia of how things were done. Well, that's um, a good point. Is, that's a good point. It's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll finish it. And it's important to capture that, too, because things that we take for granted or we assume, uh, now it's just the way it is uh, for us. Uh, yeah. Well, you, know, you, you go to the store and you buy your stuff and you have no idea how it's produced. No, no. Yeah, I you know. and I do because yeah. you know we just spent some time. Well, on you can watch you can watch how it's made on TV, oh, which yeah. is an absolutely fascinating program. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I'd rather rely on my memories. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs>